Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year, even though we're in February, but I haven't seen you all January. So Happy New Year. I took the whole of January off because I was like, I deserve a break. I worked Christmas Eve, I worked New Year's Eve. I said to myself, I am not going to go ham in the first month of the year. I'm going to plan things out, take a breather, sit back and relax and just do me for a bit. So that's what I've done. So I'm now back doing so many there's so many great things coming along the way before i get into what i'm going to speak about if you are new to my channel hit the subscribe button down below if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and let's get into it <laughs> is more of me just speaking about what I have in mind for the, this year and what I want to achieve and my thoughts on YouTube and how it's changed it's become such a different space in comparison to when I joined nearly seven years ago seven years ago eight years ago something like that recently there was this email that went out to all these youtubers about if you don't have over a thousand subscribers and over a four four thousand watch time hours on your channel in the last 12 months then your channel will be demonetized and i did feel some type of way about it because both of my channels this one of my old channels didn't meet the requirements on this channel i'm short of about 800 hours i have over a thousand subscribers but like i'm short under 800 about 800 hours and i sat and pondered about it and i said to myself it ain't gonna really make a difference because I don't really make money on YouTube like that. I've never made money on YouTube like how some of these people do. My videos don't really get that much views. They like average views I probably get is a thousand to two thousand, if that. This has never been my main source of income. It's never been really one of my in, in, um, sources of income. This is actually my lowest platform out of all the channels that I have out of my social media and my blog and everything. This is the less viewed or less. Um, watched platform so it never really bothered me when that came out because i thought either way it's not going to affect my money like i get paid via doing sponsored videos and let's be honest the most i've made probably through youtube money wise is about on this channel probably 200 pounds that's about it like i mean it is what it is i'm not really that bothered about it but if we were to talk about collaboration wise i've made like 10 times that so it's not a big issue for me i've never really felt like oh my gosh if youtube was shut down tomorrow i wouldn't be able to work yes it would stop my sponsored videos but then i have sponsored content other departments i have income in other departments so it didn't really bother me but i do feel like youtube has become a, a bit of an elitist space like if you are on and popping got like millions of subscribers you're in this kind of one percent space where youtube dedicates all their time to you they love you whatever and i get it i completely understand it is a business but for the people that i like on the bottom with any kind of hierarchy and any kind of whether it's government employment whatever it is you don't get no love no one really cares about you you're like the bottom workers you do the most work and get the least amount of attention or validation and i'm just like it is what it is i just learned that it is what it is i'm not bothered by it but it is sad for those who are up and coming who are trying to get out there trying to get a name for themselves i can understand why they would be upset i can understand why it would be very disheartening why you may feel like oh my gosh um what do i do now kind of thing but what I would say to you, if you're watching this, is just keep going. YouTube should never have been about making money for you. It should be about just creating content, having a platform to share that content, which is free. Like, let's remember, this is a free platform for you to use. So make sure you're using it to your best um, capabilities and advantages that you can. This is just a space for you to share creativity and content and have an outlet. So it should never really about be it should never really be about making money, really and truly. So that's my two pence on that whole foolishness. Myself, how do I feel about YouTube? I do feel like I don't love it as much as I used to. It's not as much fun as it used to be. And um, there are times when it, it takes a lot of energy for me to actually make a video. I'm just like, can I even be bothered? Because I've got to set up lighting, I've got to set up cameras, and then I've got to do all this editing and then post it. And then hardly anyone's going to watch it anyway. So it's like, is there any point in me doing this? But then I go back to my purpose and why I started this channel. And this is a second channel that I have. The first channel I no longer use, which is UK Naturals. UK Afrolista is a second channel that I had to start because of what happened with my previous network. I haven't talked about this because I kind of wanted to leave time 
to go by before I speak about this. I was signed to a network on my previous channel. I was signed to Maker Studios and I didn't really get a lot of love from them. They never really showed me any love. I met my management team. I met everybody when I went to um, Beautycom. They was all promising, like, we're going to do this with your channel. This is going to happen. We're going to sign you up for this, this and this. And the only reason I signed up was because of me being a co-founder and co-owner of I Defy Me Tour. And they were one of our mega sponsors. So I signed up with them. And they were just like, we're going to open a UK office. Like, all this stuff. And I was just like, right. I don't believe things until I see them happen. So all this, like, promising and stuff. I was just like, yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. And mind you, they were getting a percentage of what I was making on my previous channel. So that was bothering me. It was like, you're taking money from me, but you're not actually doing nothing for me. Like, what's the point? To leave. So I said to them, can I leave? Can I get out of my contract? And they were just like, no, you've actually been renewed for another year. Like it was an auto renew that I didn't even know my account was on auto renew. So I had to wait for a whole new year <laughs> to get out of my contract, which irritated my life because it was like you're gonna get a whole 12 months of my income a percentage of that and you're not doing anything for me and I, it's not a thing where i just left it alone i was saying to them like i want to do this i want to do this with my channel and they were like oh you know uh, we'll see what we can do we'll get you to the, like all this extra stuff that was just annoying it got to a point where i think it was last march i got out of my contract because they decided that they were only going to focus on influencers that had, I think it was a million subscribers. And I was like, hey, me, bye. Like, I'm out, gone, peace. Like, I was, I was cool And because it. of that whole scenario of my contract getting renewed, I decided to start a new channel because I was like, you're not going to get my money from this channel. And I was evolving my brand anyway. I felt like I had to start a new channel because I was no longer in UK Naturals. UK, UK Naturals was a duo channel that... Um, that dissolved. So I was like, right, I've rebranded myself. Let me just start a new channel. It's going to be hard. I don't know if people will still follow my brand. I don't know if they'll still come along on this journey with me, but I'm going to do it anyway. It was one of the biggest risks I've taken and it worked out for me. My brand is on and popping right now. I am so happy with the way that my career has gone in the last couple of years from when I changed the name and rebranded. And it just showed me that what I'm meant to do, I'm doing, and there will always be people who are interested in it. So that whole fear of people coming along and following me was like, there's no need to have that fear because people will support you if they like what you do. So I love you guys who support me and continue to support me. With that being said, because of you guys supporting me and helping me and loving me and following me, it's given me so many more opportunities than I could ever imagine. Me starting YouTube was a way to just talk about UK natural listers in this country, events, you know, products to do with natural hair. There wasn't any platforms for the UK. It was all American based. So that's why UK Naturals was, was created. And then when UK Naturals dissolved, I was like, right i gotta do something that is different that speaks to who i am as a person and a woman and the things that i'm interested in and i don't know if a lot of you know this i actually have a fashion degree and a fashion diploma i was a fashion student for all those years in college in university i actually had a fashion label for five years where i was doing fashion shows and castings and i was in the industry doing styling and stuff and then I just fell out of love with fashion. I just felt the industry was very pretentious. Like, it's very catty. It's very dog-eat-dog. Dog. I didn't like it. I was like, I just don't like this. I can't, like, function in this space. So I decided to come out of it. But the way I got into blogging was I had a fashion blog. Not a fashion blog. I had a blog, like a diary, where every day I would write about my day or, like, model castings or sh shoots or shows, things that I'd done behind the scenes, letting people know what goes on. I actually had a YouTube channel for that, but it was just like behind the scenes parties here and there. And um, from that, people were like, we love your hair. Like, how do you look after your hair? And I realized there was this thing about natural hair that was popping online. And I thought, okay, I could talk about this. I've been natural my whole life, I can do this. And I decided to start the channel with um, Naomi for UK Naturals. And that's how my journey began on YouTube. And from that, it's now become UK Afrolista. And this platform is to celebrate natural afro hair as much as i am not doing as much as i used to um i'm still celebrating natural hair fashion especially plus size fashion women's empowerment like i got you girls all day my women i love you guys to the bottom of um to the to the moon and back um black empowerment and black culture and also speaking about different topics here and there that i think are of importance or relevance and that has really just become 
my purpose and what I want to do with this channel. And over the last year, I dibbled and dabbled in a lot of makeup and playing around in makeup and beauty, something that is still very new to me. I worked with a lot of big brands, which was like mind blowing for me because I'm not a beauty guru, I'm not a makeup guru, but I feel like I appeal to that girl who is not like, a makeup pro who's still finding their wheels way still experimenting so i feel like that's who i appeal to when it comes to makeup because i'm still learning different techniques and different ways of applying it and i like to keep my makeup very natural and very me so that has been my journey along that way and i'm enjoying it i really am i can't believe i am because years ago you would never have ever have ever caught me in makeup like i was like no makeup all natural ain't about that life and now i'm like concealer foundation bronzer contour like all this stuff but i'm enjoying it i'm having fun with and it going forward um especially for this year i decided that i just don't care anymore in terms of pleasing people satisfying people satisfying um doing things that are not right for me or things that i feel don't make me happy so my kind of phrase for this year because every year i have a phrase or a word that i live by and it is unapolog unapologetically me that is me for 2018. So you're going to see things that you've never seen before. You're going to hear me say things that you never heard me say before. You're going to see me do content that is going to be like, whoa, what's going on? Because as much as, much as I am opinionated and, you know, out here speaking my mind and real and, you know, direct, I do actually reserve myself a lot and censor myself a lot because I'm always thinking of what if a brand sees this or what if someone sees that? How are they going to think about me? How are they going to see me? And now I'm like, what you see is what you get, basically. I don't care anymore because I feel like who I speak to, they deserve the real me. I don't like fake people. I don't like phony people. I don't like imitators. I don't like people that think that they are something when they're really not. I like to just keep myself 100. So going forward, you're going to see a lot more content that is me speaking true to who I believe I am and who I want to be. Don't be surprised so, if you see something that you've never seen in this channel and be like, what the heck is Rachel doing now? I don't actually care. <laughs> like, I'm doing things that satisfy me and make me happy because life is short, people. Like, this week um, was a year since my nan passed away and it just put a lot of things into perspective. Like, since my nan passed that whole year, I, it's just made me think differently about life and how you really, really have to enjoy it and do things for you and make sure you're satisfying yourself. So I'm making sure that going forward, I'm satisfying myself and doing things on my platform that speaks to who I really am. I don't want to look at things in 10 years and say, I wish I did this or I wish I did that. Like, I'm going to do things that I feel benefit me but also speak to you as a woman speak to you even as a man if you watch my videos things that you can learn from things that you can be inspired by things that will help you become the best version of yourself because that is my tagline for my brand i want you to become the best version of yourself every single day and my main appeal is to women but mostly black women because i feel like there's a lot of platforms out here that are all about women's empowerment and feminism and all that stuff but when it comes to fighting for black women's rights you lot are quiet you don't say nothing so i'm here to speak up for that and to become a face and a voice within this beauty narrative that we get left out so much. That is what I'm aiming to do for 2018. Given that whole thing about the beauty narrative, um, I've seen a lot of people getting frustrated and angry about being left out of certain spaces as black women when it comes to beauty in terms of makeup ranges, like shade ranges and foundation and stuff. And I get it. I understand the upset. I understand the pain. And I was explaining this on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'm kind of tired of ranting. I've realised it doesn't actually do anything for me. Like, I used to be that girl that every time something happened, I would run on here, run on my social media and be like, listen, guys, I can't believe we did this. And, da, 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 da. and I realised it weren't doing nothing for me. Like, the anger, the energy wasn't doing nothing for me. It weren't helping me. I weren't growing. I weren't, like, becoming a better person. It just made me feel angry. Like, I just felt angry. That's all it was. It was, like, a way to just vent and just, just be angry. But it never really helped anything. And, yes, you should feel some... Like, you're, yes, you're allowed to feel angry. Yes, if something upsets you, you're allowed to express it. But I see this cycle happen where someone does something like a brand does something that excludes black women black women see it they get angry 
We then post it all over social media. And then that's it. We claim to boycott the brands, but then a lot of these beauty influencers, like, they'll still have the product in the video showing you the fact that it has no shade range, but you don't realise you're still advertising it to somebody. Like, as much as someone might watch it and think, oh my gosh, I'm not buying it. But there's someone actually watching it thinking, oh, it doesn't look that bad, you know. I'm looking for a foundation. I'm going to buy it. And that's my gripe about it. Like, speak about it in a more... Speak about it in a way that's actually going to benefit and create change. Are you then going to support the black businesses that are actually catering to you or the brands that are catering to you? Are you supporting brands who are out here struggling because they can't get any kind of, you know, walkway or door to release their brand and they're they're creating content or creating products for you? Like, a lot of times it's like, where's all the black bloggers? We're here. We are here. There's tons of us. But no one's supporting us. Like, no one. And when I say no one, I mean everyone, not just white people, everybody. Like, no one's putting the work and time in to actually support us. People are complaining. There's no 4C natural girls. They're there, but you just don't subscribe to their channels. Like, we have an issue here. What is going on? Why are we not supporting our own? When I see black women winning, I'm like, retweet, repost, like, comment, da da da. Because I'm like, I can see her grinding. I can see her hustling, doing her thing. I'm going to support her because I can't sit sit back and complain and then not support. Like, how does that balance out? How does that make sense? We need to really think about how we're channeling channeling this energy, this anger. It needs to be re-channeled. And that's why I don't rant as much as I used to. I don't post a lot of black empowerment things as much as I used to. Because there's a moment when I think, do you actually want this? Because I will rant. Everybody will rant in the comments. There's all this energy. Everyone's hyped. They're angry. Da, da, da. And then I post a brand that's supporting us. And then no one says nothing. Nobody clicks the link to go buy it. No one's supporting the brand. So what's the point? Like, what is the anger really about? Like, are you angry? I don't understand. So I've got to a point now where I'm like, rant is not benefiting me. It's not helping me in any way at all. Um, <laughs> that turned into a mini rant, but I don't know, like, I just had to say um, it, because this good news, on the other hand, I'm featured in this month's Spell magazine, I don't even know I was featured, um, somebody DM'd me the post, or the, the magazine, um, feature, I featured in Spell magazine as one of the social stars of 2018, which to me is a huge accomplishment, or even for me and my brand, because there are times, like I said, where I feel like not doing this no more, because hardly anybody watches my YouTube channel, and I love you guys who do. Don't get me wrong. The people that I know that constantly comment and they constantly view these videos, I love you guys, like, to the end of the earth. But you have to understand sometimes I put a lot of effort and hard work and money into these videos. And sometimes it can be very annoying when nobody's watching them. Like, it can be very disheartening. It's like doing a whole film, putting it in the cinema and no one goes to watch it and you spent like a year making the film like it's that kind of premise like I just sometimes get in my feelings about it you guys who support me don't get it wrong I'm not saying that you guys are not the ones I know I know who my regular followers and watchers are I know you guys by name I know you guys like I, I see you I see you I'm just saying like um it's nice to know that people like my platform they like what I post I don't actually put that much deep thought into it because I don't want to become so consumed with my social media because it can overtake your mind. And even last year, I put a post up talking about following. My following was like going like this for about a month. Like I lost about a thousand followers in a month on Instagram. And the only reason I knew it was because brands ask for your numbers. They ask for your statistics and your analytics because they want to work with you. They want to see if it's viable for their brand to work with you. And I never really paid attention to following. I never really looked at the numbers and was counting them and was like, oh my gosh, two away from the... I never did that. But it's not until brands are like, okay, when you see your numbers and you're like, okay, cool, send your numbers. Next brand, we see your numbers. You're like, wait a minute. Last week I had 200 people more. What happened? I want to see your numbers. Wait another 200 people are gone like you start thinking what's going on like what's happening and that's what I was doing I was just like this is mad this makes no sense to me should I change my content my friend's a social media manager I was like what do I do to get my people to come back and she was just like it's not that she was like it's not that deep calm down like people will follow you the people that are interested will stick with you they're there don't worry about the people that are leaving 
they know you're concerned and that's why i've got a good friends and circles around me that they are like my ride or dies i love you guys you know who you are love you to the to the end of the world the end of the moon the sun everything i love you guys but she was saying to me like don't look too deep into it it's not that serious um nowadays it's not about following it's about engagement and i have really good engagement so it was just like don't worry about it cool so i kind of like put that to the side and i realized like it's not about the the numbers of followers you have it's about the quality over quantity it's about producing great content it's about doing things that are true to who you are as a brand as a person and my content speaks a hundred percent to who i am it's things that i enjoy it's things that i want to talk about things i like love to do or places that i love to go or clothes or fashion or whatever it is it's all content that speaks to who i am and what i enjoy in life and i want to make sure that people that are on my platform understand that's what it is it's not a thing of just look at me i'm so pretty like no and even recently i've been posting a lot more selfies and stuff because when i do post very deep deep provoking content no one cares like no one reads it like People are so used to pretty pictures. Like, I remember watching a video, an inspirational video, and the guy said, if you're pretty, you should be on Instagram because you can make a lot of money because people just like pretty pictures. And I get it now. Like, you guys love pretty pictures. (laughs) You ain't got time to read, like, paragraphs upon paragraphs. So I got a balance of, I can do a pretty picture with a good caption that will speak to what I'm trying to portray and what I'm trying to speak about. So I've met, I found my balance. But before, when I used to post like some deep content, it was just like, zoom, straight over the head, like zoom. So I realised that I had to find a balance of how to incorporate different things within different things. And I've done that now. So that was a lot for me. I was just like, oh my gosh, is there any point in me being on here? Like people just leaving. Am I doing something wrong? Should I rebrand? Should I change my content? Should I become more like the Instagram popular girls? Like, should I do that? And then I was like, no, I don't want to do that because that's not who I am. And I'm going to get lost in that. And that's going to be a whole different thing. So I decided to just stay true to who I am and do what pleases me and satisfies me so that's what I've been doing and it's working like it hasn't changed anything in terms of brands want to work with me I've got like huge things coming up there's things that are happening for me that is like wow and it's not a thing of I don't feel like I deserve it I think I deserve it because I work freaking hard but it's wow it's like rich wow I'm gonna be me trying to have fun with it do what i want to do like i said i have the best supporters in the world you guys are just like the best supporters in the world and you know tell a friend to the friend tell a friend about me because this year i don't think you guys are ready it's about to be on and popping like uk afrolisa is about to be on and popping i'm already like sizzling i'm about to be fire blaze like get ready guys i don't think you are ready but get ready and yeah that is like this video this video has just been like all over the place but i just want to talk and speak my mind and kind of just set the space for what 2018 is going to be and um, like i said youtube is not my biggest platform my biggest platform at the moment is instagram and follow me on instagram because i post nearly every single day new content whether it's fashion beauty makeup hair life quotes whatever it is just follow me on there i have everything on there and that's it um, guys um let me know also down below if you've got this far in the video because this is a long video let me know down below if there's any specific uh, let me know down below because this is a very long video if you've got this far um any specific content that you would like me to share this year or speak on i am going to be doing a lot more um deep topics like a lot of things that i think we don't speak about things that i think we need to speak about especially as black women i'll be doing things like that i'll be doing a lot more collaborations with other people on my channel as well so it won't just be my opinion and thoughts there'll be other people as well so yeah let me know down below if there's any specific content that you feel that you want to see or things that you want me to speak on that you like to know my opinion on or whatever let them know down below also i'm still doing my arts rachi i'm planning for episode two i will leave a link down below about that arts rachi is like, like a dilemma um segment that i'm excited to do if you have any issues dilemmas questions anything about anything not just relationships like there's other things in this world any problems you have even business lifestyle anything send me an email with your queries your questions your dilemmas issues whatever it is i will keep you anonymous i will not say your name if there are names in the content i will change the names around so nobody will know it's you so send me an email or my details will be down below and yeah guys um i hope you're gonna enjoy this year with me i hope you're gonna have fun with me i'm excited thank you so much for sticking with me and being here so until next time guys bye (laughs) Oh, <laughs>